Let me start this piece by stating my stance on the hoodoo tradition. It has always been and will always be an African practice. The amalgamation of diverse West African cultures that were forced to work together against a common enemy is at the very core, root, and fruit of root work and conjure. To oversimplify it into a combination of African, Native American, and European concepts is misleading and unfair to the legacy of the practice. Conjure and root work was our natural way brought with us during the transatlantic slave trade. It served as a protection for slaves suffering all manner of abuse and trying to find a way to cope with their unfortunate circumstances. Yes, African slaves did come in contact with Native Americans and took pieces from their traditions because they knew of herbs that were unfamiliar to us since we were used to working with different natural items. Yes, after World War I, Europeans moseyed their culture vulture asses over to our practice to add in and take away, but nothing of their influence bears witness to any claim they can make of adding anything of significance to hoodoo besides the Psalms and use of the Bible, which is a forced inclusion into the heritage of root work that we had already created. In the same way that many of us claim no ownership over the sway over the legacy of hip hop and white guests to the culture will say hip hop is for everyone, the same went for conjure and root work. Now, the majority of those who profit from the sale and commerce of not only conjure tools and supplies, but also the practice and legacy of it, are Europeans who have no connection to the origin or generational pass down of this African or African-American practice. One of the most famous thieves of this African-rooted legacy is the founder of LuckyMojo.com, which sells courses, classes, credentials, and products to many within the Conja community of all races and backgrounds. I recently had a very interesting conversation with Miss Catherine Ironwood in her Lucky Mojo forum, and although she blocked me from the site, I was able to screenshot every piece of our conversation from start to finish. It's a little bit too much to put here, so I'll paste the links for anyone interested in reading the text in full. Miss Ironwood, like so many before her and so many under her tutelage, has made buku dollars by peddling ideas that are not wholly authentic and tools that may not be either. She is a microcosm, though, of an ongoing legacy to remove the Africanness and the blackness from cultural notions and artifacts, use them to build status and wealth, and routinely exclude those people and ideas who the notions and artifacts originate from. Katrina Hazard Donald, author of Mojo Working, The Old African American Hoodoo System, wrote on her own blog that as long as we have peddlers the likes of LuckyMojo.com passing themselves off as experts, we will have this problem. No money drawing oil, no jinx removing spray, no war water, just plain old plantation hoodoo. They are distorting other people's traditions. They mix hoodoo with European witchcraft. They fabricate items and pass on fabricated traditions that their ancestors used to exploit African-American folk belief. Then they further attempt to justify and excuse their exploitation by blaming the victim. And I can totally bear witness to that because she does that during our exchange several times. In the late 1700s, Europeans were cutting, bleeding, and leeching the skin to cure many diseases and ailments. While there may be some validity to those practices, they were heavily outshadowed by our customary uses of roots, herbs, powders, tinctures, and salves for healing all kinds of diseases. Regular European medicine at this time was based on the four humors, and that is blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. Their study of cures was based on philosophy and guesswork rather than actual science, except in the cases of midwives, where healing traditions were actually passed down from family to family, but hadn't been accepted much in the mainstream just coming off the witch hunts in both Europe and the United States. During the early 1800s, Europeans began raiding tombs in Egypt and simultaneously outlawing the practice of conjure and root work since so many rebellions were taking place where slave masters were being poisoned by their slaves with roots, herbs, and powders. Around this time, those men who would become traveling salesmen, mobile doctors, and healing oil salesmen got smart and started taking the knowledge that Africans had of healing modalities and practices. They wrapped their bits and pieces of information up in a glass bottle and sold as much as they could. 
In the late 1800s, after much tomb raiding and studying under Africans and native people enslaved all over Europe and the United States, a full-fledged European system of medicine that was based on science and actually worked was in formation. According to recorded European history, European midwives in the Christian colonies throughout the late 16th and 17th centuries were the main holders of European herb healing tradition. Even though they were heavily persecuted by European men, they were more interested in taking what they could learn of African healing practice, not as much in participating in equal share of information due to racism on their parts. So when they say hoodoo is a construct of African traditions mixed with European traditions, they are referring to European traditions mixed with what they stole from us and our traditions mixed with Christianity that they forced on us. The reference of hoodoo as an admixture of those traditions, again, refers to their version and practice of it and not ours in most cases. There wasn't much that they were interested in offering us and inversely, not much that we needed from them. African women had been delivering each other's babies and healing people on the plantation without the assistance of Europeans in any way. So we had our own healing practices as it relates to pregnant and laboring mothers and the community in general. Understanding the history of European medicine and magical practice gives some context for the references that many outside of the original practice of what we call hoodoo, conjure, and root work give to it. To give an example, while many Europeans were also polytheistic people with a connection to nature for healing, the advent of Christianity saw many of them killed and persecuted for heavily utilizing nature and spirit within their context. Those who were able to preserve their cultural practices did, and during the Crusades and then later the witch hunts in the United States and Europe, many of the old ways were scrubbed out due to fear of further persecution. Black people all over the diaspora had already had centuries of experience hiding our ways under the guise of Christianity, even if many of us came to accept Christianity in our hearts. We still knew that elderberry and hot bath water would knock out a cold or respiratory infection overnight, or that the 23rd Psalm would call the spirits to protect our families from the wrath of the slave master. So those Europeans who remember their old ways and passed them down to their children utilized the knowledge and approach of the African slaves and incorporated what they learned into their dwindling, fading practice. So don't let them just feed you that we incorporated their ways into ours. No, that's not how it happened. They incorporated our ways into their ways of life and then went on to build entire industries in healthcare, the occult, science, and cultural appropriation from ancient Egypt to modern America. We have been the main influences of every part of European lifestyle, and to believe anything else is to choose to be misled about your legacy as a black man or woman of African descent, no matter where you are in the diaspora. It's just like when you got some coffee that's too black, which means it's too strong. What you do, you integrate it with cream. You make it weak. If you pour uh, too much cream in, you won't even know you ever had coffee. It used to be hot, it becomes cool. It used to be strong, it becomes weak. It used to wake you up now, it'll put you to sleep. This is what they did. They joined it. They didn't integrate it, they infiltrated it. They joined it, became a part of it, took it over. And as they took it over, it lost its militancy. They ceased to be angry. They ceased to be hot. They ceased to be uncompromising. <laughs>